Well, thanks everybody for coming back from uh, lunch so fast and on time. Um, so we're going to be uh, getting into the harder complex session now. <laughs> so hopefully everybody can enjoy it. I'll just make sure we're off mute on Zoom. Oh, yeah, good news. Um, so this is Lewis from Maple, who's going to be running through the design and development of the Easy Bin package. Cool, thank you. Yeah, and don't worry, it's actually not that uh, complicated. It's like relatively simple, so it should be all right. Um, let's go. Right. So I've got two key keyboards in front of me. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to be... Set this up. Yeah, so I'm going to be introducing Easy Bin, uh, which is intended to be an easy to use R package for uh, building budget impact models. Uh, yeah, so I'll start with an overview of what it is and why we built it, um, and then go through an example, and then finish with some uh, reflections and next steps. So I'm sure everyone here already knows uh, what BIMs are, uh, but just to say they're usually simple models and sometimes super simple models, uh, and they're usually built uh, in Excel. Sometimes, um, like if the BIM is going to be used as a field tool, then you might want like uh, an engaging and user-friendly interface, and that's where sometimes you see our shiny BIMs as well. Um, yep. So, why did we build Easy BIM? Um, so, firstly, um, we thought it could be useful to have um, a package that could be used as an engine for our shiny models. Um, and potentially, secondly, uh, it could be a tool to QC Excel models. Um, but to do that, EasyBIM would have to be like quick and easy to use, um, and it would need to cover the functionality in the existing model. Um, and also, it does require um, a lot of trust in EasyBIM. Otherwise, uh, if you get a difference in results between um, your EasyBIM model and your Excel model, you don't want to be in a situation where you're doubting whether the, the error is in EasyBIM wouldn't be ideal. Um, and lastly, if you already have an R-based cost-effectiveness model, um, then you might also want uh, your BIM to be R-based, and you might also want to use some of the outputs of your CEM in the BIM. So, yeah, we also had um, some personal motivations for building um, Easy BIM. The first thing is, uh, because they're simple models, they're um, pretty good learning opportunities for R, and one of the things we wanted to do was learn how to um, build a package um, and best practices for doing that. And that partly came um, from last year's uh, workshop where there was like a fair bit of talk about building package packages and um, made it seem accessible and worthwhile. Um, and something that came up then as well was the idea that um, if you already have a well documented and well structured R project, then it's not too much work to then make it into a package. Um, and I, I agree with that, but the bar for well -documented, uh, a well-documented package or our project was honestly quite a bit higher than I was currently working with. Um, so that was a learning process as well. Uh, yeah, and we also wanted to explore different packages um, to see if they could be useful for health economic modeling. So we looked at S7, for example, uh, and S7 is intended to be the successor of S3 and S4 um, and to become uh, part of base R. So it's a new object-oriented uh, programming system um, which helps manage how functions uh, and methods um, interact with objects based on their class. Um, but a, a, a disclaimer here, this isn't like an object-oriented package because OOP is like, well, it's a huge rabbit hole and quite a scary one that I don't really go into too far, but we do sprinkle in some S7. So we, yeah, there are some uh, useful applications of it, I think. Um, and then finally, uh, CLI, which is a package to help um, improve the print output, um, which we use to improve the print output of the classes in our package. So the first step was to conceptualize EasyBIM. Um, and to do that, we looked at 
um, with several existing models. They were all Excel models. Um, and initially, uh, we focused on developing a functionality for like a simple BIM with some additional features. Um, and yeah, we haven't added all the features that we like to, but we're kind of incrementally adding them. Um, the features kind of range from super basic or essential, like a patient funnel, uh, to something that you don't always see, like um, estimating the optimal uh, file size. Um, yeah, but in, in the next example, I'll kind of go through some of the uh, more simpler features of EasyBIM. Yeah, so in this section, um, I'm going to walk through how you would build um, a simple BIM uh, using EasyBIM. Uh, and the model is going to include um, acquisition costs, admin costs, monitoring costs. Well, I might touch on monitoring costs and adverse events as well. Uh, and there's going to be some joint therapies, some monotherapies, multiple formulations, and uh, treatment specific time on treatment. Uh, yeah, so these are all, all of the necessary arguments you need to run model at the run the model. Um, so basically, all the inputs in your model are, are going to be in here in some way. Um, so I'll kind of just walk through uh, each component. So firstly, you can add the currency. That's just going to change the output, um, your print output. Uh, the time horizon always expressed in years. Uh, the time interval. Uh, and that's like, say if you have um, um, time on treatment or in general your, your treatments are expressed in months, then you can have a default one and you can create exceptions if you want um, to make that easier. Uh, patient weight, you only need that if you've got like treatments that depend on the patient weight for the dosage. Um, and you can have the mean and you can also add the standard deviation um, if you wanted a distribution of patient weights. Yeah, and just to note that we're going to go through um, the simple parts, partly because it's easier for me to explain while I'm standing up here explaining it. Um, but yeah, so we won't touch on all of the things like file combination optimization and subgroup analysis. Yeah, so the next thing um, is to build um, a simple patient funnel. Um, so in EasyBIM, um, the functionality is for quite a simple one. So you'll start with um, the total population uh, and then you'll kind of cascade down the funnel proportions um, until you get the number of patients treated in each year. Uh, and what you can see uh, there in the console output is what the CLI output looks like. And that's absolutely tiny, so you probably can't see it. But it's, it's telling you, um, it's showing the inputs and the outputs together. And it's also showing a note that if you wanted to, um, if you have a more complex patient funnel in mind, then you can use the, you can directly plug that in. Uh, and kind of throughout EasyBIM, um, we've kind of taken that approach sometimes um, so that you can maybe use parts of EasyBIM, but if you have something more complex or that doesn't fit in EasyBIM, you can um, use that as an input. The next bit will just be to create market share inputs. Uh, and that's uh, fairly standard. So you have three treatments included in, in the model uh, in this example. Um, yeah, so each element of the vector is for a different treatment. You have the world with and the world without the new intervention. Um, and something throughout EasyBIM is a warning message. Um, like in this example, uh, there's been an input error because the years don't sum to one. The market shares don't sum to one in some of the years. So it's telling you that they've been, um, in those specific years, uh, it's been normalized to sum to one. And it's telling you where you can find uh, the adapted or the adjusted market shares. Uh, yeah, so anytime we kind of do something behind the scenes in EasyBIM, we try to put it, uh, show the user what's happening with a, with a warning. And then you would add that to a model. Uh, the next bit is uh, creating treatment objects in the model. So in EasyBIM, um, each of the treatment treatments included in the model um, will be an object that you create using the BIM treatment S7 class. So this is just where you enter all your uh, ab admin and acquisition um, costs or inputs. 
Uh, and in this example, uh, it's showing um, a joint therapy for, uh, for one of the comparators, so comparator one and two. Um, and for some of the inputs, like this price is a vector for each treatment, um, and that's because there's uh, multiple formulations uh, for that intervention. Um, so you have like just the standard um, acquisition cost inputs, like list price, units per pack, milligram per unit. Um, and here you can also determine the dosage schedule and the time on treatment. Um, yeah, and again, there's a console output um, using, so if you print um, TX1, uh, that's what it looks like. We've kind of overwritten print, essentially, for, for these objects. Um, and something convenient uh, about S7 is that when you, that the, um, the properties are automatically validated essentially. So we've set some of them, for example, um, basis to be class character, but if they enter something that's uh, something else, then there's going to be an error, um, which is just super quick to do with S7. And again, there are warning messages uh, throughout if there's any um, any input errors, and also to kind of guide the user if we have additional functionality that they could consider. So here, they could have uh, added a vector for time on treatment if they wanted treatment-specific time on treatment. Um, so we've got a bunch of notes and warning messages that um, kind of guide the user in that way. Uh, and the final bit to add in uh, is you've already um, done the dosage schedule, so now you can just add in uh, your your the unit costs per admin cost, um, as well as determining if you want them to be per dose or per dispense, um, which is set. So per dispense is set up once per month. We could make that flexible. It might be a next step. And then you just add it to our model, um, and we'll call that new object base case. And if you print the base case, um, then you can see uh, a mix of a summary of inputs, um, some of the outputs, or well, the key results, and some plots. So these are um, a summary of the inputs. And at the top, there'll be an accumulation of um, any of the warnings throughout the model. Uh, and then for the results, um, kind of. Um, so you've got the budget impact results and the cost per patient and so on. Um, and a note to say where you can find more detailed results if you want to. And then a few pl plots like market share and budget impact over time. Yeah, so um, we think EasyBim doesn't yet make uh, full use of the potential benefits of S7. Uh, partly that's because OOP in general seems like a huge rabbit hole and there's bound to be interesting ways you can apply it. Um, but also in terms of that property validation, um, it, for some of the cases we've set it so they can um, enter lists. But if, if you enter a list, then the user could then, within that list, add any kind of object, like a vector or a character, uh, and it's, it's not going to check that. Um, but from a developer's perspective, um, I found the process of defining classes and methods uh, quite, uh, quite, quite quick and quite easy to get my head around. Um, but then S7 is still experimental, um, and it's not part of base R, so there might be big changes in, in the future. And there's also not that much documentation um, because it's so new. There's just that, not, that, not that many examples out there. Um, and then in terms of, from a, from a user perspective, I've already mentioned like the print methods and the type validation, but one other thing is the documentation. So S7 classes, or I think classes in general, will inherently provide information about their uh, structure and properties. So if you were to print BIM treatment, then you're gonna see all the properties within it and the class that those properties should be. Um, so if you are adding a new treatment, it's kind of easier for the user to see um, what they can add and what kind of functionality uh, is in there. Um, and then in terms of the functionality of EasyBIM, um, so we found that the, it's hard to get the balance between ease of use and flexibility. 
Um, so to make it easy to use, we basically try to simplify the user interaction as much as possible. Um, so essentially, the user inputs um, provides the inputs and the settings, and then EasyBIM takes care of the rest, which has some problems. Um, one, you kind of, um, I mean, it can be convenient, um, and it could be appealing for those um, who are new to R. But then the predefined predefined functions, you kind of left with the assumptions built into the package, and potentially a bit of a, a black box scenario where they don't really know what's going on. It will be open source, so they can see the code, but that's a concern as well. Um, but then to kind of alleviate some of, some of the um, the problems with the built-in assumptions, we try to add in flexibility where we can, um, like uh, using additional arguments into one model. Um, like you can, for example, you can set vial sharing for one treatment and not for others and things like that. Um, but as we keep adding in these options, uh, it becomes uh, more complex and the user needs to take more time to read the documentation. Yeah, so that w it was difficult to get the balance right between those things. For next steps, um, <coughs> so we want to build um, a Shiny <coughs> app to see um, how compatible EasyBim will be with that. Um, and we're going to experiment with things like dynamic UI because the package is quite is kind of flexible, so you can have any number of comparators. So the UI is going to have to populate that automatically. Um, and we want to make it easier to create the treatment objects. Like if you have a CSV or Excel table, it, ideally it would be um, much quicker to add in inputs for the treatment objects. And then documentation. Um, so we need to keep adding to the documentation. Um, and we also want to have some vignettes. An example one would be um, we want to take some published BIMs and we want to replicate it um, so we can kind of va validate the package further. And we will share as well. But first, more validation. Um, we also want to look at um, a CERT-HE's function network, because uh, we want to look at how the functions connect um, and how the test coverage is, which will reveal that we haven't done any testing yet. So that will also be an important <laughs> next step. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, we, we have previously replicated um, like Excel models. Um, but we plan to do more of that, and we want to also do um, published models too, to replicate those. Uh, yeah, so I think I'll leave it there. Thank you. Great, so hopefully we've all got some good questions for Lois. Yeah. Yeah. Get your hands up. Feel free to go first. Um, just one comment about which one of these you think is the most important. Obviously, sharing it, but um, documentation, I would probably rank higher than testing at this point. Because the value of vignettes is that people can see how you do it and then you can really maximize the use of your package. Yeah, that's true. I mean I mean I, I guess they're both super important and as we've gone through we've tried to like document all the functions and stuff like that using um Roxygen. Um but I think if we can really focus the documentation on the parts the user actually interacts with because potentially they don't actually interact with that much of it if they're gonna um, like the, the inputs I walked you through in the ROM model, if we can just get that um, solid, then they kind of know how to use it. Um, but at the end of the day, like if they know how to use it, but there's problems with the underlying model, then like that's yeah, we've got to focus on that too. Sure. About flexibility and complexity, did you explore the structure that you use in the external world? For instance, when you print the base wizard. Can an external programmer also look at the base result and, for instance, uh, change the result for a specific country, for instance, when they are within lines of treatment for cancer, for instance? So, just to repeat the question for those online, which I forgot to do first time, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was Can you expose the structure um, when you're looking at the results? And then there was some discussion around country adaptation and how that might be done. So. Yeah, in terms of exposing it, um, do you mean because you, we have a print method that uh, kind of overrides the object? Yeah, so you can print, you, well, you can use STR instead, and that's going to reveal everything is kind of in, of its, in its raw format. Um, so in that way, they can tell how to interact with 
all of the objects it, it, uh, within the object. Um, and in terms of country ad adaptation, um, not sure about that one. To be honest, what, what, what did you want to know about country ad adaptation? So, for instance, the total budget for yeah. the next five years, for instance, is just the total budget as represented in the graphs. Mm -hmm. If some country would require a breakdown, a specific breakdown, specifically for their country, can we just extract the, the data basically behind the graph and represent it on top of all the other space we have? Yeah, like any any graph you see, you can you can um, extract the underlying data, um, and there's also that was like a summary of the data, but like there's, because this is something that came up when we were trying to QC models too, that you kind of need to have as many different outputs as you can because uh, it can kind of help you uh, QC other models because you want to look at a particular part. So yeah, basically anything that we thought of that could be useful as an output, we've tried to include in there, um, but we could probably extend that further. Yeah. Cool, got time for one last question, Darren. Uh, there's a question. Yeah. So one, one of the things that gets a bit fiddly with Venice is uh, combination characters and that they stack at different times, so they have different maximum total duration. Is there a way of handling that? Uh, also, sometimes in your game, you might be only looking at the budget impact of one of those combinations. So the question was, how do you look at complex treatment patterns like combination treatments, and can you only look at one particular component within a combination within the budget impact? Yeah, so you can uh, split the regimens. Well, the regimens, you can add in um, multiple treatments within each regiment, so as many as you'd like. Uh, in terms of, uh, can you split the results into can, uh, the impact that, was it one treatment within the regimen? You want yeah, to look at the impact of that? Like new value or something old then yeah, you can see the breakdown uh, of that too, because we kind of built it. Um, the initial model we, we tried to replicate um, had the feature of multiple uh, treatments within each regimen. So that was kind of built in at the start, yeah. Perfect. Cool. Thank you very much. Oh, go on then. <laughs> uh, it, does it also include the uh, complex structure like micro costing approach of, uh, of the costing calculation, uh, like dose edge and while sharing on or low and then base stage, mm -hmm. like that? So yeah, yeah, exactly. It includes. Um, a wastage setting, and there's a there's a part of the package where, because um, we we saw in some Excel models, um, you'll calculate that the, the, the optimal uh, combination of vials, um, but the, the ones I've seen in that tend to be, some of them are hard coded. There are VBA code uh, for it, but it can be really slow. Yeah. But for this, it's because it's R. Uh, I mean, it's really quick. So that is one advantage of this, I think. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.